Are you looking to secure your email and make sure that attackers and hackers can't spoof your domain to send phishing emails to your customers or people that you deal with? Well, today we're going to talk about three email security controls that you can implement on your domain to be sure that attackers cannot spoof your email address. And you can set security controls on your incoming email so that you can stop attackers from spoofing some of your sender's addresses if they have these three controls turned on. Hi, I'm William, and welcome back to another 5-Minute Friday Cyber Session where we take complex cybersecurity topics and explain them for SMBs in 5 minutes. Before we get into today's topic, be sure that you hit the notification button and the bell so that you're notified when we release future videos. All right, let's throw up 5 minutes on the clock and get talking about SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. So when you bought your domain, you probably notice, or you may not have noticed, that you can set up DNS records at your domain registrar level or at what, whoever or whatever organization you give DNS authority to. Most of the times this is done with the organization where your domain is registered. So say you bought your email from GoDaddy, then you would go to GoDaddy to make these changes that we're about to talk about. The first change that you can make for your email security is SPF. SPF stands for Sender Policy Framework, and essentially what it does is it attempts to link an authorized senders to your domain. So you're publishing records that tell who is allowed to send email for your domain. So if you have an on-prem server, if you're using something like Exchange on-premises, then your SPF record would include the IP address of your server. If you're using something like Office 365, the SPF sender would be the servers of the Office 365. And this is done by adding a TXT record with a certain configuration to your domain DNS records. Then when a recipient receives email from you, they will check your SPF records and see, was this sender authorized to send email for this domain? If not, there are steps we'll talk about when we get to DMARC that you can take to prevent those emails from going through, or it will be up to their policies. Like we mentioned, this is done by adding a TXT record to your DNS um, settings. Um, that usually takes the form of something like V equals SPF1 um, space A include, and those includes are the authorized senders for your domain. SPF is checked during an SMTP conversation, and that is, in short, the conversation that happens between mail servers when email is being sent back and forth. And when you talk about mail, you can kind of think about regular mail. You have a package, and you have an address um, and a from on that package, and then inside you usually have another letter with a from. And mail is the same way. We have an outside address and an inside address. SPF is looking at that inside address unless it fails, and then it goes back and looks at the outside address. Then it goes back and looks at the outside address or a hello address, which comes from the server itself. And in your security settings on your incoming email, you can set your SPF to look at both, and you can actually catch more phishing when done that way. Okay, the second control we're going to talk about is DKIM. DKIM is Domain Keys Identifying Mail. And in short, DKIM is, uses signatures to link email back to a domain. Um, if you understand anything about cryptography, you know public key cryptography, um, where we have a private key and a public key, and those two work together to decrypt the messages. Um, you send a message that has been encrypted with your private key, and then someone with your public key can decrypt it. DKIM works very similar to that. So what happens is the sender attaches a signature to that email that the recipient can then check to verify that it, that mail has not been altered and is actually from who it says it's from because if it is encrypted or hashed in the case of DKIM, because that's what it does is it takes the um, email from in the body and it hashes them, then the recipient uses your public key to do the same and compares it to see if they are valid. It's really sort of like a watermark for email. It verifies that it's not been changed along the way and it is from who it says it's from. So again, like we said, DKIM is very signature to dig digital signatures. And here's what happens during the DKIM process. The process gets rid of all the extra parts of the email, uh, everything that's not needed, important. It gets down to the bare bone components of the email. It hashes the e body and the headers, like we said before. Then the sender has access to a private key that they use to um, create the signature with, and they create a crypto signature that gets attached to the email and sent to the recipient. When the recipient receives the email, they also hash the body and the headers based on the instructions in the DKIM DNS records, and they retrieve your public key from your DNS records at your domain registrar like we talked about, and they use that key to compare your signature to make sure it's valid. Now the final email security control we're going to talk about is DMARC, 
for domain-based message authentication reporting confidence. And essentially what DMARC does is it is a record you publish at your DNS registrar and it tells recipients what to do if your emails that you send fail either SPF or DKIM that you have set up. And there's a few options. You can tell the recipients, if you receive an email that addresses to be from my organization and it fails any of those tests, likely it's malicious, then take these steps. And these are the steps you can tell them to take. None, which essentially leaves it up to the organization what their incoming email security policy is. Or you can tell them to quarantine those messages, or you can tell them to simply reject them. There's also an option you can set up inside of DMARC that actually creates compliance reports. When you set up DMARC, you can add an email address that you want these reports to go to. Then when emails fail SPF and DKIM, and the DMARC is triggered, it will send a report back to that email address so that you can monitor um, who is trying to spoof your address. And that can be used to fine tune and tweak your security controls. So those are three controls, SPF, DKIM, and DMARC that you can set up for your organization to secure your email. Now, there's one big problem with this. This really works for stopping people spoofing your address. It's not guaranteed to work on all of your incoming emails unless the sender has this turned on. And that's one of the problems with this, is it's not a 100% of a silver bullet across the board. It only works for organizations that have it turned on. Now, yes, it is likely that the big organizations like Microsoft or where you'd be getting emails from SharePoint and those kinds of things, they likely have it turned on. But some of your third-party vendors, they might not. And that's something to keep in mind. So that wraps up today's five-minute cyber session. If you need help with the cybersecurity at your small or medium organization, feel free to reach out to us. There'll be a link in the description where you can contact us. We'll see you next time.